was with Christmas. Let's begin the formal session by evoking the blessings of Almighty. For the same, I invite Miss Alinda, a second PG student, Sigurad College for Women, Chalakuri. Prathanagal Padail Pukalai Vidyanam Puvirinya Vidigal Punya Vidigalagalam Punya Varigalilodina Yatra in Chianam Yatra Chiyam Miss Lynette Anthony Rule, Miss Lynette Rosalind Anthony, Assistant Professor of Mathematics Department, Sacred Heart College for Women, Chalaguri, to introduce the resource person of the day. Good evening. As Steffi mentioned to us, Ms. Smita Davis is the head of the Department of Mathematics, SHC. Her graduation and post-graduation from Bharat Mata College, Ernakulam, and her MPhil from Cochin University has strengthened her academic career. And she's such a great teacher and mentor for all the students she have taught. She's someone who has a deep urge to healthily push students to good opportunities and openings. I can undoubtedly mention her genuine involvement in envisioning and materializing this enrichment program we conduct from last year. Her instant bonding with students and colleagues and the effort she makes to sustain it is one among her best qualities. She is with us to briefly give us all an outlook of stereographic projection in complex analysis in the session of day three of NEPM 2021. And we are welcoming you, ma'am, as a word of officiality. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lynette. I heartfully welcome you, you Ms. to this program. Thank you, Stephanie. With great with great honor and respect, may I invite our resource person, Ms. Nida Davis, Assistant Professor, Sehapat College, Woman Chalapuri, to speak about the topic stereographic projection. It's my pleasure to welcome you, ma'am, to this program. Thank you, Steffi, and thank you, uh, Lynette, for those kind words. That was very nice. And uh, of course, it is uh, the word she mentioned is officiality. Of course, it is just an officiality because I'm a part of an EPM team. And uh, this program, of course, we have envisioned uh, that uh, through this program, we, mean, we are meaning that uh, every year students should get uh, something new out of the book uh, uh, for their course, for, their, uh, for genuinely creating an uh, interest in mathematics. Okay, so with, uh, without much delay, I'll just start my session. Hope my, hope I'm audible clearly, right? Lynette? 
Yes, yes, you are. Okay. And my screen is visible, right? Presentation, you're seeing? Uh, yes. So, dear students, uh, today uh, we are going to deal with stereographic projection, which comes to you across your uh, complex analysis course. Okay. Uh, in some universities, it is an, it is an undergraduate level in the... In some courses, it is in postgraduate level, but definitely uh, during your complex analysis course, you will come across a word called stereographic projection, and most of the students get confused about the concepts about it. Okay, uh, it is due to uh, the way uh, I mean the abstractness with which uh, maybe the authors or the, maybe the presenters are presenting this topic. So we'll keep it today as simple as possible. Okay. So mathematics is a subject it should be kept it like that i mean uh, as simple as possible so our uh, today's journey will be like this i'll uh, first introduce i'll sp speak about the motivation uh, then we'll quickly uh, go to the mathematics and stereographic projections and its applications okay so first we'll note that what stereographic projection is as in the figure you can see a sphere and a plane. Okay, so the word stereographic projection has done something to do with a sphere and a plane. Actually, stereographic projection in geometry means that it projects the sphere onto a plane. Okay, projecting a sphere onto a plane. You know that a sphere is a two di three dimensional object and a plane is a two dimensional object. Okay, what does it mean? We'll discuss it later. But stereographic projection, the word means or uh, what it uh, actually means, uh, the it is uh, a function uh, which identifies each point in the sphere with each point in the plane and the reverse also actually it is a bijective function. Uh, it, uh, the projection is a bijective function. Uh, that means uh, every point in the plane is identified with a point in the sphere too. Okay, now I have uh, mentioned a word here, it is conformal. For that, I, sh I have already told this uh, uh, sphere is a 3D object and plane is a 2D object. So while transforming the points in the sphere to the points in the plane, there should be some distortion, right? It is in common sense. Uh, it cannot be both area preserving and both angle preserving. Okay, that means the curves drawn on the sphere can cannot be uh, both in area preserving and angle preserving in uh, the plane. Okay, in geology, in environmental science, all the students just they, uh, I mean, it is their common sense to understand the concept. But in mathematics, we have rigorous proofs for everything. Okay, so we have rigorous proofs for this also that uh, there cannot be area preserving and angle preserving maps from uh, a sphere onto uh, a plane. Okay. Uh, some of you must have heard about differential geometry in that uh, we have rigorous proofs saying that the Gaussian curvatures of sphere and plane are different. So we'll have uh, actually, uh, we cannot have uh, area preserving and angle preserving maps from sphere onto plane. Okay, so uh, the Gaussian word Gaussian curvature and differential geometry will be far behind the scope of our today's lecture. So we'll keep that aside. Just I would like uh, to mention that we have rigorous proofs for the same. So our stereographic projection is not area preserving, but it is angle preserving graph. I mean, angle preserving map. Okay. Angle preserving maps have a specific name in uh, complex analysis. It is conformal. So we have just mentioned the name. It is conformal. Okay. So that is a basic idea uh, about stereographic projection. What we are going to do is uh, connect each point of uh, in the sphere to a point in the plane. Okay. So the million dollar question: Why stereographic projection? See, behind every basic mathematics, uh, students of mathematics should ask this question: Why? 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 Uh, not any mathematics happened accidentally. Yes. The word accidentally should be caught it. Uh, it is not accidentally. Uh, I mean, uh, on one fine morning, someone has uh, uh, 
rose from the bread. Oh, it's a fine morning. I should define group today. Or I should define topology today. No, it's not happening, right? That is not the thing. There is a specific necessity for every mathematics that we are studying. Okay. At the time it was defined, there was a necessity of being defined. So we'll today just discuss what was the motivation behind this. Okay. I have written the name Hipparchus and Ptolemy uh, as per the data is available. Uh, this Ptolemy and Hipparchus, they all knew about stereographic projection. Okay. So why they should know uh, about the stereographic projection is a million dollar question. Uh, this as uh, when hearing these names itself, you know, you can actually guess what will be uh, the need. They were all astronomers, right? Uh, so what was the need of that? Uh, at that time, I mean, at the time of Hipparchus and Ptolemy, what was the main source of income? Agriculture was the main source of income uh, and cattle farming. That was again a main source of income, main source of actually livelihood. So the people uh, actually sow seeds, reap, uh, I mean, uh, do cattle breeding, everything in certain particular time. So that for a particular time, they looked upon stars. They looked upon stars. They identified the constellation. So when this constellation comes, it's rainy season. When this constellation comes, it is uh, summer season. So they identified this uh, seasons from the constellations. For all that, they need something called needed something called celestial charts. Okay, they prepare certain charts. For preparing those charts, and we know that uh, Earth is a 3D object, uh, a sphere, a spherical object, and uh, uh, the celestial paths, all these celestial paths are uh, 3D objects. For mapping them to the plane, to the to a, uh, for uh, making them into a paper, they should have needed this uh, projection. I mean, they should know how to project a sphere onto a plane. So that was the basic need of this theory. Okay, at first it is uh, known to be plano spherical projection. Okay. And before moving to applications, we'll first uh, feel what uh, this is. Okay, so this is a GeoGebra tool. So we, before going to the rigorous mathematical proof, uh, first we'll uh, feel uh, what a stereographic projection is. Imagine you have a soap bubble. Okay, a transparent uh, soap bubble will be a little uh, difficult word because it can pierce a non-piercing transparent uh, ball you have okay sphere uh and uh, our sphere is a unit sphere okay and i'm passing a light through a certain point which i am calling it to be uh north pole n okay and if it if my uh sphere is uh no i mean our uh, my sphere is unit sphere then uh this point north pole n should be n001 okay now i'm inserting a plane right through the origin right through the middle of the sphere that means right through the origin and our plane is an xy plane now so i have the plane i have the sphere so imagine just it is happening uh now through this uh, sphere i'm inserting a light okay so this is my light so when i pass this light it pierces the sphere at a point and it touches the plane at a certain point, right? So I'm seeing that through stereographic projection, what we are actually doing is mapping this point to the, this point in the plane, the piercing point and the point at which the light falls, at, the, at which the light falls, okay? Uh, so I am attaching this point and uh, trying to find out a connection between this point through which the light pierces the sphere. That means it is a uh, three tuple. Uh, I'm naming it to be P, X, Y, Z and uh, a point uh, I'm naming it to be Q, small x, Y. In the plane, uh, it is small x, Y. Okay. So the I'm trying to find out a connection between uh, this point in the sphere and this point, the uh, point at the sphere at which the light pierces and the point 
uh, where the light is falling. Okay. And uh, as I'm moving this light, as you can see that uh, in the northern hemisphere, when I am uh, moving this uh, sphere, it passes through every point in the sphere and every point in the sphere is actually is mapped onto a certain point in the sphere. While um, I'm taking light inside, it is a plane first, then the point, right? It is a plane first, then the point. So anyways, uh, there is a point in the plane uh, should be identified with a point in the uh, sphere. While at, I am moving the light through the southern hemisphere, I mean, if it, uh, this, uh, this uh, plane is passing through this uh, plane, this circle is termed equator. This is North Pole, and definitely I can call, uh, then definitely I can call the lower part of the sphere to be the southern hemisphere, right? While um, I am taking the light inside, it is a plane first, then the point. Okay, so basically, uh, I can uh, map any point in the sphere except for except for the projection point, uh, except for the projection point, uh, because uh, it is a uh, point from which uh, the light is passing. Yes, I am excluding the projection point, and we'll deal with the projection point later. Okay, so uh, now. You have felt what a stereographic projection is or you have actually felt what I'm going to do. I'm trying to find out the maps, the, a map which uh, actually is taking the point on the sphere, this point, to this point in the plane. Okay, how it is mathematically done is the next question. Consider this our unit sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 1. And this point is uh, projected to uh, the point Q, uh, X, Y, 0 in this uh, plane. I'm trying to find out the connection. I mean, how a point in the sphere is identified with Q. I mean, a point in the plane. And how a point in the plane is identified with a point in the sphere. Okay. So the points I'm identifying, uh, the point in the sphere is P, X, Y, Z, our North Pole and 0, 0, 1. And uh, our point in the plane at is q x y zero okay we know that these all are lying in the same line and zero zero one i mean our line i mean our line is a straight line path uh, so it is they are all collinear okay there are several methods again before noting going for my method and noting down that there are several methods for doing it uh, you can do it with similar triangles you can make it as complicated as possible okay so uh in three diamond in three dimensional space uh if three points are collinear it satisfies this ratio x y z if x y z x one y one z one x two y two z two are collinear then it satisfies the ratio x minus x one over x two minus x one is equal to y minus y one over y two minus y one uh, which equals z minus z one by z minus z1 by uh, z2 minus z1 okay so these points are collinear means it is we are using this formula x minus 0 over small x minus 0 equals y capital y minus 0 is equal to small y minus 0 and capital z minus 1 over 0 minus 1 okay so it will be capital x by small x is equal to capital y by small y is equal to it is negative one year so it changes z minus one to one minus z okay that means we can take uh, x to this side and one minus uh, z to this side that means uh, from first and third we'll get small x is equal to capital x over word minus z and capital small y is equal to from second and third ratio we can get small y equals capital y over 1 minus z okay that means a point a capital x y z a point x y z in the sphere is identified with the point in the plane as x by 1 minus z and y by 1 minus z so we have uh, we have obtained a one way of the projection that means we can identify we have identified a point in the sphere with a point in the plane okay so this point this point xyz in the sphere is mapped to 
x over 1 minus z and y over 1 minus z in the plane. Now, carrying carrying it further, uh, I want to get the reverse projection. My, I mean, uh, the how I can connect the point the in the plane to the point in the sphere. Okay, for that. Uh, taking x square plus y square, it is capital X square plus y square over 1 minus z the whole square. Now, what is x square? Capital X square plus y square? It is x square plus y square is 1 minus z square. Okay. So, it will be 1 minus z square, a square minus b square. It will be 1 minus z times 1 plus z. So, 1, 1 minus z will get cancelled. Uh, it will be 1 plus z over 1 minus z. Taking 1 minus z to LHS. It will be x square plus y square times 1 minus z is equal to 1 plus z. Now, uh, I am taking uh, z, all the terms with z to one side and this taking 1 to left hand side. I will get capital Z is equal to x square plus y square minus 1 over 1 plus x square plus y square. Okay. So, I have obtained z. Now, I can obtain capital X. What is capital X from this formula? From 1. Capital X is equal to small x times 1 minus z. For that purpose, I will require 1 minus z. Okay. So, 1 minus z I am finding. 1 minus z substituting, taking LCMs. Uh, this x square and uh, minus x square will get cancelled. Y square and negative y square will get cancelled. It will be 2 by uh, 1 plus x square plus y square. So, as I have mentioned, capital X is equal to Small x times 1 minus z means it is actually 1 minus z is 2 times 1 plus x square plus y square. So, it is 2x times 1 plus x square plus y square. And uh, capital Y will be uh, small y times 1 minus z. So, it will be 2 times y, small y by 1 plus x square plus y square. So, that means I have got, obtained the reverse projection too. That means a point x, y. Okay, I can avoid actually zero. A point x, y in the plane can be identified with a point in the sphere as 2x by 1 plus x square plus y square, 2y by 1 plus x square plus y square, and uh, x square plus y square minus 1 whole divided by 1 plus x square plus y square. That means a I can identify a point x, y in the plane with at uh, three tuple in the sphere okay with a three tuple in the sphere so my basic objective is done i have identified a point in the plane sorry in the sphere with a point in the plane and i have identified a point in the plane with the sphere so basic stereographic projection is defined okay now we'll uh, just move on to what is its requirement in, uh, or how it is defined in complex analysis Okay, so if our plane is argon plane, okay, is if our plane is argon plane, then any point x y with any coordinate x y, we can actually associate a complex number z is equal to x plus i y, right? Okay, that means any point in the sphere, in the unit sphere, capital x y z, any point p x y z. It can be identified with the complex number capital X over 1 minus Z plus I times Y over 1 minus Z. Yes, I have missed out something. Uh, actually, what I have missed out is there is an important point that I should have mentioned is actually z is not equal to 1 because otherwise it will be not defined. Any point x, x, y, z, uh, we are drawing it is distinct from the north pole. We are avoiding our uh, actually north pole or projection point, right? We doesn't want uh, our uh, stereographic projection to be actually, uh, this mapping should be defined on N001. N001 we are keeping aside for some other purpose. So, this z is not equal to 1. This is well defined. I should have mentioned it earlier. Okay. So, our uh, p, x, y, z, this point uh, is identified with the complex number x over 1 minus z plus i, y times 
y over 1 minus z in the eigen plane and any point uh, any complex number x plus i y can be identified with points in the three dimensional sphere as 2x by 1 plus x square plus y square we can make it much more interesting 2y by 1 plus x square plus y square x square plus y square minus 1 by x square plus y square plus 1 i'm writing okay so what is actually x x is x is real part of z right and we know that real part of z is equal to z plus z conjugate i know everyone is i shouldn't be defining z conjugate right z conjugate is x plus x minus i y by 2 x minus i y uh, and uh, real part of z is these are all basics real part of z is equal to z plus z conjugate by 2 so i can make this formula like and what is x square plus y square what is our mode is it modulus of z the, the distance of the point from the origin it is defined to be modulus z and modulus z is square root of x square plus y square so modulus z square is x square plus y square so it is actually two times uh, z plus z conjugate by 2 so 2 get cancels okay sorry by 2 is there here is a uh, here there is a 2 so 2 get cancels to be z plus z conjugate whole divided by 1 plus modulus z square okay now it is two times y is real uh, imaginary part okay like y is imaginary part of z and uh, we are identifying imaginary part of z is equal to z minus z conjugate over 2i or we can write it i is actually over i is actually negative i negative i times z minus z conjugate by 2 So these are all important piece of information from basic complex analysis. So I can identify it with z minus z conjugate over z minus i times this over one uh, plus mod z square, and here it will be mod z square minus one over mod z square plus. Wow. so any point in the complex and comp any complex uh, number z can be identified with a point on the sphere as z plus z conjugate by 1 plus mod z square minus i times z minus z conjugate by 1 plus mod z square mod z square minus 1 over mod z square plus 1 okay so finally we have done uh, successfully actually projected our complex plane to the sphere so what was the need uh, that is a, a million again a million dollar question is what is the need of doing it one such motivation is uh, i hope you must have heard about meromorphic functions meromorphic functions can someone quickly recall what meromorphic functions are and mute and tell what are meromorphic functions functions which are analytic every word except at the poles okay so what is a pole that is i mean uh, the meromorphic functions are the functions uh, which are analytic everywhere except i at the poles means it's only singularities are poles poles means uh, if a function f of z as a pole at z is equal to a means limit z tending to a f of z is infinity that is that it's it is not defined it is moving to infinity okay 
so if i can quantify this infinity that means if i can identify infinity like uh, a thousand a ten thousand or a lakh like a point if i can quantify infinity then actually a opposite i mean our meromorphic function will be it, it won't uh, actually it won't be a pole it won't be a singularity at this point right if i can quantify infinity i mean if it, if i can consider infinity to be a point like 1000 uh, 200 or something like that then this pole won't be a pole f of z will be analytic at this point too right that means this meromorphic function will be an end it will suddenly be turning over to an end function that means a function which is analytic everywhere end function okay and the uh, end functions are of much interest to complex analysis people because end functions are functions which have many smooth properties okay so we will get a wide variety of meromorphic functions this class of functions this class of functions to this class of function wow it is a smooth uh, it will be a very uh, well appreciated thing to be happen okay so that is a that is a basic uh, need uh, in complex analysis for identifying this uh, points in a plane with points in a uh, sphere okay for that uh, one more thing i just want to okay now how can we identify this point as with infinity uh, now i am considering our plane to be this uh, complex plane so this point is our small z okay x plus i y are a complex point okay this complex point uh, what is mod z it? it's the distance from the origin the distance of the complex number from the origin okay this mod z is equal to 1 if mod z is equal to 1 this uh, point in the sphere and the point in the plane both are same right if mod z is equal to 1 this is our uh, this sphere is a unit sphere that means the our equator is unit circle that means uh, when i am placing it in the equator that is mod z is equal to 1 while i am moving it away actually mod z is greater than 1 right now it is mod z is greater than 1 it is uh, moving far away from our unit circle means it is mod z is greater than 1 it is distance from uh, 0 is increasing greater uh, larger than 1 okay so any for any points whose mod z is greater than 1 actually you can see that it is identified with a point in the northern hemisphere right as you can see from the graph now again if i am taking this to the circle into the circle that means our my mode is it is decreasing right mo if mode is it is less than 1 then actually it is identified with a point in the southern hemisphere okay now i can as i said i can move this uh, further this light further 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 any further but as i am taking this light uh, further you can see that the piercing point of the sphere is coming closer and closer and closer to the northern hemisphere i mean north pole and right i i can move only like uh, this much but you, your your imagination can pass on limits so as i'm moving this light farther to the farthest point this piercing point will actually be colliding the north pole and that means our infinity in the organ plane can be identified with this point n001 that is our infinity is identified with a point in the sphere wow it is quantified it is identified okay so that is a great thing to happen to us we have identified infinity we have identified identified infinity with the north pole n001 okay our complex plane with which infinity is being attached as a point it is called extended complex plane extended complex plane okay 
so in extended complex plane for defining actually extended complex plane will uh, require actually the stereographic projection because this infinity should be identified this infinity should be quantified and we are identifying it with now the point uh, n001 in the sphere okay so our uh, extended complex plane is well defined now again there are things to be noted now i am going to define uh, a distance function okay so i said it is identified with a point fine uh, now can i uh, measure the distance between uh, any point and the infinity any point any complex number x plus i y and infinity what is the distance between this point and infinity you'll uh, find this question a little absurd right can it be quantified can it be identified mm -hmm. i mean in uh, actually actual mathematical sense yes it is um, not possible but now we have a certain tool that is our stereographic projection uh, we are going to use it okay so let us define a distance function between the points in the extended plane in the following manner okay so any play uh, we are uh, taking two points two points z and z prime in the extended complex plane uh, and the corresponding planes in the sphere i am denoting it to be capital z and z prime capital z i have written in this blue color okay otherwise from my handwriting it is impossible to identify it okay so this z and z prime are points on the sphere unit sphere and this z and uh, z small prime are uh, are complex numbers okay and uh, we know what is the distance between two points uh, so i i am telling i mean i am defining it the distance between z and z prime to be the distance between the corresponding points in the sphere okay so that means uh, we know that uh, what is the distance between two points uh, z and z prime in the sphere i mean or uh, both are uh, three dimensional uh, coordinates what is the distance you usual i am taking usual euclidean distance it will be x1 minus x1 prime square plus x2 minus x1 x2 prime square plus x3 minus x3 prime whole square the whole raised to 1 by 2 okay taking square on both side it will be d small as it small as it prime the whole square is equal to now here it will be a minus b the whole square again a minus b whole square a minus b whole square so it will be x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square it will be equal to 1 because it is a point in the sphere right unit sphere again we'll have x1 prime square plus x2 prime square plus x3 prime square so it will be again equal to 1. So we have two ones. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 minus. Here it will be 2 times x1, x1 prime. Uh, minus 2 times x2, x2 prime. Minus 2 times x3, x3 prime. I have written it here. So I can take 2 outside. Now uh, I have identified small x. Any point uh, x, y, z. X, any point uh, x plus i, y. What uh, certain point in the sphere? I'm using that formula. So here it will be uh, in terms of here. I can use in uh, terms of x1 and x2 and x3. I can substitute this. Uh, I can substitute this. Is it uh, small? Is it plus? Uh, is it conjugate by one plus mod? Is it square? And uh, in terms of, uh, I mean, in place of x2, I can substitute. Uh, negative i times z minus z conjugate by 1 plus modus z square and in terms of x in uh, place of x3 i can substitute modus z square minus 1 over modus z square plus 1 okay similarly in place of x1 prime x2 prime and x3 prime i can use the same same like coordinates just in place of z i have to mention z prime right so i have substituted this uh, all the denominators are same. Uh, it is uh, mod z square plus 1 times mod z square, uh, mod z prime, uh, z prime square plus 1. So taking LCMs and doing the calculations, I'm uh, sharing this PDF actually in your uh, WhatsApp group. So you can go through the calculations. You can do your calculations by yourself. Anyways, I have done all the calculations and obtained a certain distance okay the distance is uh so after the calculation you will obtain it as 
for your uh, i am using a certain um, thing will be i know most of you will be know that knowing that mod z square will be equal to mod z z conjugate these things i am using here in place of mod z square i have used z z conjugate and uh, for transforming it to this form again i have used that formula okay so uh distance between z and the z conjugate uh, sorry z prime it is actually a whole square will be 4 mod z minus z conjugate prime the whole square whole divided by mod z square plus 1 times mod z prime sorry z prime mod square plus 1 okay so taking square uh, square roots again it will be 2 here and square will tell uh, square is uh, gone it is mod uh, z minus z con prime conjugate and uh, in the denominator it will be uh, raised to 1 by 2 square root okay so between any two points between any two points in the uh, argon plane argon plane now i can actually find a distance okay finally i have a distance now can i find the distance between z and infinity yes because infinity is identified with the point Zero zero one, right? So, in terms of in uh, place of z capital z conjugate, I can use zero 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 one, and I can get the formula two times one plus mod z square the whole raised to one by two. Wow! So I can quantify even quantify uh, the distance between any point uh, z an arbitrary point complex number z and infinity. So now infinity is clearly a well-defined point in the argon plane. Okay. Now I forgot to uh, mention that this method is basically by Bethen uh, Riemann. The sphere is called a uh, Riemann sphere, and uh, this plane is a basic example of the Riemann surfaces. Okay. Again. there are several methods in doing the stereographic projection you can place the plane passing through the uh, origin but uh, not piercing the plane but just keep the uh, sphere above the plane okay for that uh, we have to just uh, actually adjust the sphere a little the sphere won't be a unit sphere it will be x square plus y square plus z minus half the whole square is equal to 1 by 4 okay then the point will be this but uh, the plane i am keeping it over the point i mean it is pa passing through the point 0 0 here okay so uh, for finding this project you know also 7 5 4 5 6 7 so uh we can identify in this through this projection also we can identify a point in the sphere with the point in the plane the calculations is very much similar to what i have done earlier it is just uh, i'm in place of x square plus y square we have substituted 1 minus z square earlier it will be 1 by 4 minus z minus half the whole square a little more lengthy calculations but almost a proof is the same i'm not going to the details because it is the same it will be a real repetition okay uh, students please go through it uh, and uh, please note down it okay now uh, uh, in the about two methods i have kept my plane so that uh, it moves i mean it is uh, defined through the point 0 0 it is defined i mean it is passing through the point 0 0 0 so now i am uh, taking off that condition that means i am leaving leaving that condition i am placing uh, this uh, plane as uh, not in uh, passing through the origin i have kept this plane passing through uh, the point uh, 0 0 minus a that means the plane our plane is z is equal to minus a there is any point in the plane is identified with the point x y minus a okay but our and our north pole will be now 
or sphere is x square i have uh, from uh, unit sphere i have uh, i am now generalizing the, uh, my uh, sphere to x square plus y square plus z square is equal to a square it is it was one square unit circle earlier it is now a square i can do it with any uh, so sphere of any radius okay and i'm placing my uh, plane not on the equator but still the concept is the same these points i mean the uh, north pole the projection point uh, and the point on the sphere and the point on the plane these the uh, this projection line or our light still is in the straight line we can still use the collinearity and uh, get smooth formulas for identifying a point in the sphere with this is identifying a point in the sphere with a point in the plane and this is how we can identify a point in the plane with a point in the sphere so still the method is the same i have kept the same method there are several methods in the uh, net available of course so we'll uh, just quickly go to the application side now in the complex analysis side i have said the applications cartography is a study of maps actually uh in the study of maps uh, it's very important actually either the maps uh, the basic fundamental idea of cartography is that uh, from a 3d sphere it is not possible i have already said in mathematics we have regress proof for this that uh, it is not possible that in angles and in shapes in areas uh, we can represent uh, this uh, spheres uh, sphere, uh, objects in the sphere to the it cannot it is not possible to map uh, the objects in the sphere which preserves angles and areas in a plane it is not possible to do so okay so either it is angle preserving projections or area preserving projections area preserving projections are used uh, in cartography for uh, actually statistical purposes and uh, for uh, navigation purposes we use uh, this angle preserving maps Uh, and uh, our stereographic projection is a proje one such projection okay again i should mention stereographic projection is not the only one projection it is a one such projection okay in crystallography we can identify the varieties of crystals you know crystals are 3d objects we can identify variety uh, crystals are of very important uh, in uh, whether it is in science uh, in any uh, any branch of science geology and environmental science physics chemistry everywhere the study of crystals appear and wherever the study of crystals appear for getting the minute details it is very important that this crystal structure is made into a plane a paper of course we are using getting the help of computer for that but stereographic projection still is a very important tool for actually projecting that uh, 3d object to uh a plane map in the computer planetary science in planetary science stereographic projections are widely used because of its very important property that circles are carried over to circles see uh it was time limitation otherwise i would have given the proofs for this also uh circles are mapped on to circles and uh, straight lines are mapped on to straight lines under stereographic projection it is very valuable property in the planetary science okay since there uh, they are all dealing with uh, circular objects okay circles uh, orbits they are dealing with so it is very important property of stereographic projection geology i actually this was uh, a part of a little uh, out of the way search because uh, i found many applications in geology and uh, environmental science for this um, stereographic projection and uh, in uh, geology and environmental science they are studying stereographic projection okay they are using it for landslide hazard uh, failure studies earthquake studies structural geological analysis fracture analysis uh, mining industry and many more actually i have just uh, quoted a uh, little Uh, from what i have got uh, so there is a huge amount of studies uh, in geology and uh, environmental science mathematics students can opt for i am mc environmental science also after graduation in mathematics of course 
Now, just a mention of WolfNet. Stenographic projection is basically carried out by a computer because there are infinitely many points in the uh, in the sphere, and to identify each point with a plane, it is impossible to do it with uh, paper and pen. Okay, but uh, for certain statistical, I mean, uh, for uh, certain navigation and uh, cartographic uh, geologic purposes, they'll uh, require to do it by themselves. For that. They'll have um, a graph paper. That graph paper is called actually stereo net or wolf net. Okay, it is due to Russian mineralogist George Wolf. Okay, so with this, I'm winding up uh, today's talk. I have not given references uh, actually any standard textbooks of uh, complex analysis will include uh, stereographic projection. Uh, I have uh, gone through John B. Conway's functions of one variable, one complex variable. You can refer alphos or any standard text for uh, getting stereographic projection. Uh, and uh, one thing, uh, this. you can uh, also obtain a, uh, notes on complex analysis by John McKean. John McKean. Uh, I found this also very. Uh, this will be very fruitful uh, lecture notes on complex analysis. He has done it very beautifully. I appreciated it a lot. With this, I'm winding up. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, such a uh, such an informative class. Uh, next, I invite uh, Ms. Surya Ramakrishnan, second PG student, Sacred Heart College for Women Childhood, to deliver the word of thanks. Good evening, everyone. On the behalf of Sacred Heart College for Women Childhood, I'm here to offer a word of thanks on this national enrichment program. First of all, I would like to thank Smitha, ma'am, for such a magnificent session on the topic stereographic projection. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing your valuable insights on the topic. I'm also utilizing this opportunity to express my gratitude towards the organizers of this session. My deep sense of appreciation and thanks to every participants also. Once again, thank you everyone for being with us in this afternoon. Thank you. Uh, anyone has questions? Actually, many have left. Uh, anyone have any questions? Okay, fine. Savi, you were about to tell something. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Surya. Uh, the link for feedback from ANQs are already given in the chat box. So thank you, everyone.